So you mean to tell me that there's actually a chance that Don Staley could land the number one portal target in the entire country? I, I don't even know what to say. Let's just get on into the show. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I'm Andrew Line, the host of this podcast and also the lead publisher for Gamecock Digest over on Fan Nation. Thank you all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now as new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. I was getting ready to prep my outline for this show earlier today and then some interesting news came out regarding South Carolina's women's basketball program and more specifically their potential pursuit of the number one transfer portal player in all of women's college basketball in Kiki Irifian, a senior forward, a rising senior forward from Stanford. Now, what led to all this conversation was this X account who, I kid you not, the name of it is Skim Mulkey. So basically Kim Mulkey, but add an S to the beginning of it. But here's the point. This account went on X earlier today and made the following post saying Stanford transfer Kiki Irifian is scheduled to visit South Carolina next week Per source. Now, this account does have a pretty decent following, and I get it. It is not a maybe reputable, verifiable journalist that is posting this, but this post was later reposted by 94 Feet WBB, standing for Women's Basketball. That Twitter account is an account that is associated with being viable, reputable, and having broken news plenty of times in the past. So I say all that to say this. If 94 Feet Women's Basketball is reposting that, then this has to be legit. And then, if you thought that there couldn't be any more smoke to this fire, South Carolina's own... Don Staley went on to X earlier today and she posted this photo of her basically making a look on her face like something is up and wish I could tell you more but can't say much right now. She also posted three Japanese ogre emojis which for those of you who are wondering why the heck is that relevant that's basically what Don Staley posts on X or used to be Twitter If something is indeed cooking behind the scenes in a positive way for South Carolina. All of that to say, it appears that there is something going on here between Kiki and South Carolina. Now, I know the very next thing that a lot of fans are going to talk about is why would you even do this? Why would you go after a portal target? South Carolina already has the players that they need on their roster or coming into the program this offseason in order to try to make it back to the national title game and go back to back next year. But I will say, when watching some of her highlights, I think that there's an incoming freshman that could benefit greatly by learning and watching Kiki Irifian playing for South Carolina should that indeed come to fruition. I'll explain that a little bit more in a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by Monopoly Go. 
I will admit, I have a competitive side, we all do, and my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it by this point. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is, you can mess with your friends. So, for example, I can charge them rent on my iconic properties just like Classic Monopoly, but I can also now heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard showed me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to win huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket place of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch, and you can save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for games at the ballpark. we got a big series taking place in Atlanta this weekend as the Braves are going to take on the Cleveland Guardians. Those two teams right now possess the two best winning percentages in all of Major League Baseball. And to top it all off, the Braves are going to have a Friday night fireworks show after the game's concluded. So, you can get tickets for as low as $23 for tomorrow night's game. Might be a great game to bring your kids out to. And again, you're going to see some high-quality baseball between right now two of the better teams in the entire sport. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Welcome back to this Thursday edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and one of you every dares who make the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast your first listen, wherever you get your audio podcast daily, or your first watch on YouTube. Now, Kiki Irifian, why would she be a good fit for South Carolina? Besides the fact that obviously she's very talented, averaged a double-double at Stanford this past season, what would be some other benefits? Well, the biggest one that I can think of at this point in time is what she could do for incoming freshman Joyce Edwards. Now, Joyce Edwards obviously is one of the most highly titled recruits that South Carolina has brought into the program in several years. National Gatorade Player of the Year, a co-MVP of the McDonald's All-America game, helped Team USA defeat Team World in the Nike Classic just a weekend or two ago. Joyce Edwards is already quite accomplished. But the thing that I picked up on when I went and watched Kiki's highlights on YouTube from this past season and what she did at Stanford is that she plays a very similar style to Joyce Edwards. So here's where I'm going with this. They both like to play face up on offense. Now, Joyce Edwards, I think more so than Kiki, she really does not have an issue going on the low block and trying to back down her defender in order to get to the basket. But they both prefer to face you up like they're essentially a guard and try to take you off the dribble. And they both move like guards. Kiki, much like Joyce Edwards, that she's very athletic. She definitely does not have center blocks for feet or anything like that. So she can get to her spot pretty quickly. And the other thing is they both can drive to their left or their right. So they both attack individual defenders in pretty much the same way. Now, while I do think Joyce Edwards does possess a higher ceiling at the end of the day compared to, say, Kiki Irifian, I do think that Kiki, with the experience that she has and the way that she plays, you're basically getting a more seasoned 
Joyce Edwards if you do land her out of the transfer portal. And going into next season, most of us already assume Joyce Edwards, she's not going to be starting immediately. And she would for probably 99% of the programs out there, but because it's South Carolina and all the depth they got in the front court, at the beginning, she's going to have to, you know, really earn that playing time. Kiki, obviously, if she were to come here, um, I don't think there's any question. I think she would start for this team. And so it would allow Joyce Edwards the opportunity to sit on the bench and basically watch and learn. If you're Don Staley, you wouldn't have to necessarily tell Kiki, hey, we would like for you to pass along your knowledge, what all you've learned in your career to Joyce Edwards over here. But I do think that if Don is willing to go after someone like Kiki Irifian from Stanford, she sees this bringing much more benefit than potential consequence, whether it's locker room dynamics or, you know, maybe someone leaving the program if they don't like the fact that Kiki gets brought in. But I think one of the biggest benefits that might not get talked about, if this all happens, of course, is what this could do for a Joyce Edwards who, again, would be coming in as a true freshman and, while uber talented, could still learn a few things before she eventually steps into a starting role in her sophomore junior season here at South Carolina. And the other thing is, Kiki is an elite rebounder. She averaged 11 rebounds in 28 minutes per game this past season. While Camilla Cardoso and Ashley Watkins would have been quite close to that mark if they had averaged 28 minutes per game last season, no Gamecock would have been able to match that at that same pace in terms of playing time. So I think there's no doubt Kiki, she could come in here and she could play at the four. She maybe even could play at the five if you really wanted her to. She is six foot three, so maybe you would like for her to be a little bit taller if you were going to place her there. But the point is this. I think that this move could make more sense than people might realize or maybe even want to admit. And again, sure, you would be risking maybe losing somebody, but I think the benefits greatly outweigh the potential consequences. And I think one of the biggest benefits would be what she could do for Joyce Edwards in terms of helping the young freshman out when she got here again saying if South Carolina lands her at the end of the day. Now, speaking of landing big commits, Shane Beamer and South Carolina's football program landed a massive one on Wednesday afternoon, and one that was also quite the surprise. We'll talk about that prospect and what he could bring to South Carolina should he stay committed in just a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL, and baseball's in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. The Miami Heat had a massive upset the other night, knocking off the Boston Celtics in Game 2 of their first round series on the Eastern Conference side of the bracket. And I have to say, it's kind of crazy how despite the fact that the Heat have now even the series at one game apiece and now essentially own home court advantage the rest of the way, they are a plus 1,200 underdog to actually win the series right now. Again, plus 1,200. So if you're looking for a hidden prop bet to put some money on for the NBA playoffs, that could be a good one because the Miami Heat, there seems to be something about how they match up with the Boston Celtics when it comes playoff time. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. Shane Beamer and South Carolina's football team, they landed a fundamentally sound national level prospect on Wednesday afternoon in the form of four-star linebacker Rodney Colton. Now, the reason why this was a surprise was, one, Colton had only visited South Carolina one time, at least when looking at his on-through recruiting profile to this point in the process. And you typically don't see prospects commit after just one visit to a particular school. And the other thing is, Colton comes from the state of Georgia. 
And there were plenty of teams within the region, big time players that were going after him. The Georgia Bulldogs being one of them, along with the Auburn Tigers. And so the fact that Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks were able to land Rodney Colton on Wednesday, I'm sure it was not just surprising to Gamecock fans, but also probably a big surprise to Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs and Hugh Freeze and the Tigers. So needless to say, this recruitment is probably not going to wind down anytime soon. I would imagine that those two teams are only going to up the ante the rest of the way in order to try to get him to decommit from South Carolina and reconsider. But... If we are to assume that Rodney Colton sticks with his commitment the rest of the way, here's what South Carolina would get. Athletically speaking, Rodney Colton, he doesn't have necessarily one trait that just jumps out when you watch his film, but he does have the speed in order to chase down ball carriers. He's really good at taking pursuit angles and chasing down someone that's carrying the football from the opposite side of the field. He's got the speed to do it, and he's got the football IQ to understand the exact angle he needs to take in order to catch up to said ball carrier. He's also great at snuffing out screen plays when he's lined up out wide on maybe a slot receiver, and he is very consistent when it comes to maintaining his gap and lane integrity as an off-ball linebacker. This is not a guy that's just going to basically try to run on in there and create a bunch of havoc because he has so much belief in his own abilities that he feels like maybe that certain fundamental rules of playing defense doesn't apply to him. That's not the way Rodney Colton plays. Rodney Colton is going to abide by the fundamental rules of defense until the ball carrier has gone past him or they come into his area of the field, and that's when he will go and make his move. So overall, Rodney Colton, it's quite impressive just how fundamentally sound he is considering the fact that he's only played two years of high school football. He's still got two years left to grow in every other area before he gets to the college game. So I could see why he's already rated as a top 100 prospect and top 10 linebacker for the most part, depending on where you look in terms of these recruiting service websites. So big win for Shane Beamer and the staff. Again, I highly doubt that this one's going to be over anytime soon. I have to imagine Kirby Smart and the Bulldogs and Hugh Freeze and Auburn and quite frankly other teams for that matter are going to take their swings at Ronnie Colton as this recruitment goes along but it never hurts to get your foot in the door early and that's exactly what Shane Beamer and the Gamecocks did when Colton was on campus for the spring game this past weekend. So with that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. Hope that y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show. As always, what are y'all's thoughts on Kiki Irifian reportedly going to take a visit to South Carolina this next week? What do you think that could mean for South Carolina? How do you think she could benefit the program? Do you think it could be through helping some of the younger front court players? Or do you think it would add another dimension to South Carolina's front court altogether? And lastly, what are your thoughts on Shane Beamer the Gamecocks football program landing linebacker Rodney Colton? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section on YouTube, or you can shoot me a direct message on X at a lion underscore SC. Again, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.